Hey guys, I am about to take this style out of my head. I've had it in for I think two weeks and so I'm just ready for something else. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a different protective style where my hair is completely put away. When I first became natural, I would just do a lot of these like little updos and stuff. This is all flat twisted up and then I have loose twists on this side. Once I take the twists out, I'm going to deep condition as I always do with every shampoo, but I'm also going to do a hot oil treatment. I'm going to use my Joyfully Natural Oil, which I do have in here. And I was asked how to purchase it. I have sold it to friends who have wanted to support me, but I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to get it out there to others. If someone's really serious about supporting me, just send me a DM on Instagram and then we can discuss how to get it to you. But thank you for your interest in supporting me because the product is pretty amazing. With that being said, I'm going to remove these twists. While I'm removing the twists, I'm going to be wetting my hair just with plain water, applying the silk elements. I use this a lot as my pre-poo treatment, applying the oil. I'm going to put both of these on my actual hair, but I will be applying the oil only to my scalp. I'm going to put that under a cap and then deep condition. As I am untwisting, I just want to share with y'all my birth stories. I have had two children at this point and they were both water births. Things went well with both of them and so I just want to share with y'all how I was able to have two minimally painful natural births. I feel like I definitely knew a lot more with my daughter than I did 10 years ago with my son. So before I really get into my birth stories, I just want to let y'all know that I'm just sharing this information with you. I'm not endorsing or encouraging or any of that kind of thing. Do what you feel is best for you. But I just felt like I should share what worked for me and just my story. The reason why I chose to have natural unmedicated births is because I am extremely afraid of birthing children with addiction. I have family members who have addictions and who have other struggles. I already have to deal with imperfection, but then my fear of my children being born with some kind of substance in their body that could potentially affect them for the rest of their lives was so strong, like I didn't want them to have any kind of influence when they were born. I can endure whatever I needed to endure to make it to where they could have what I felt was the safest entrance into this world. When I had my son 10 years ago, I started off at a regular doctor. I went through Lamaze classes. Those techniques helped me to understand like how to breathe. The hospitals that I was talking to, they had tubs, but they wouldn't approve me having the baby in water. And it was about four months into my pregnancy. The facility that was 45 minutes away was in my budget. And also the midwife that was there had a lot of experience. My first birth, I had an appointment on the day of my delivery and it was six days before my due date this appointment was before work so i scheduled it that morning and then i was going to go into work half a day so when i got to the midwife i had been leaking a little bit um, but you know that's not uncommon later on in your pregnancy i ha had been having you know the braxton hicks contractions the weeks before they weren't intense but you know they were painful when she checked me um, she was like, wow, you are actually in labor. Not active labor, but you are in labor. She was sending me home. I told her that I wanted to go to work. She's like, you can't go to work, you're in labor. And I was like, what? So at that point, I was like, I'm not in pain. Like these contractions are the same, like they have been, you know, for the last month or so. And so I was kind of shocked that she said I couldn't go to work. So then my husband and I just went to Walmart and we literally walked up and down every single aisle of Walmart. It must have taken us like two to three hours to do that, y'all. We literally started at one end of Walmart, and this was a super Walmart, and we walked up and down every single aisle in the Walmart, and not a one employee stopped us to ask us if we needed help. Can you imagine we were there for like two, two to three hours and nobody asked us if we needed help? That evening after we got home, I called the midwife, but I guess my voice didn't show her that I was ready. So she was like, yeah, 
just call me back in a little bit. And so I took a shower and then I just could not stay at home anymore. And so I called her. I was like, I'm coming in no matter what. And she's like, okay, you're ready. Come on in. So when I got there, very nice room. I love birth centers because they try to make the environment feel as homey as possible. We had some calming music, some affirmations playing. And I believe that that really helped. Whenever I started to feel like I needed a lot more support, I was able to get into the tub. And something that I really appreciated about that birth center was that they had the jacuzzi jets. They didn't keep the jets on when I was having a contraction, but they would put the jets on to counteract the pressure and the pain in between contractions. And that really, really did help me. I was in labor for either 22 or 26 hours. It was a long labor. I got to the birth center, I think around one o'clock in the morning. And at like four o'clock, she told me that I was gonna be sent home and I could not have that happen. So I told my mom, she was there with me and she was like, baby, we gonna walk. And so we walked, there were some stairs and we walked up and down the stairs and it really did help to bring the baby down. There were some complications. If you are somebody who doesn't like graphic information, exit the video now because you might not be able to handle this. I was having contractions, but my cervix was not dilating and it wasn't opening up enough. My baby was floating up inside of me. And so even though I was having the contractions, he wasn't he wasn't engaging. So the midwife had to, first of all, when she told me I was in labor at my appointment, my water was like kind of dripping. So she thought it was broken, but when she went and checked me to see why things weren't progressing, she broke my water. And I didn't know she was breaking my water until I felt warmth and everything all on the bed. It was disgusting. So she broke my water and then she had to and pull my son's head down so that it can engage. And from that point on, like, I think everything started to work. Contractions were extremely strong. I remember saying, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. And my mom was like, baby, you have to do it. Like, who else is going to do it for you? Like, you have to get your baby out. She was there holding my hand and my husband was there, of course. That's one thing that I love about birth centers is that it really feels like you're at home. I think I had about 10 people in me for my, with me for my son's birth. My two nieces were there. Um, my sister, my mom, my dad. Actually, my dad left to go get chicken. <laughs> I don't think he would have wanted to be there anyway. I remember him telling me to put like my pants on. I was like, I can't put my pants on, daddy. Like, there's a baby about to come out of me. I remember the water being extremely dirty and nasty. I still remember parts of his birth, but it was a little foggy because it was 10 years ago. I was 24 years old at the time. So let's fast forward. 10 years to 2020. It was a pandemic. I still feel like we're in a pandemic. I know a lot of people feel like we're not, but 2020, we're in a pandemic and I'm expecting, and I'm 34. Uh, again, I started off going to a regular OB gym and being 34 years old, I was told that if I would have been pregnant now at 35, then I would be, I don't want to say geriatric. I can't think of the word right now, but I think that's what they say. Like they make it seem like when you are 35 years old, you are past your prime and you are some elderly woman. And why are you having children at that age? They were trying to have me do all these tests and things just to make sure that the baby was okay. You know, they were like, if you were pregnant in just a few months time, we would have to do these tests on you anyway. So you might as well get them for your baby's safety. And I was like, I'm not that age though. I'm 34. My mindset was if I find out something is happening with my baby that's not going to change the love that I have for my baby so what really is the point I understand being prepared for certain things but some of the tests that they do I feel like they do it so that you can kind of decide what you want to do also being in a pandemic while pregnant was extremely difficult um, it was extremely difficult to go to work. I was a teacher at the time just to think about my health, my child's health, but then also be around a lot of children and not knowing what kind of safety measures their families were taking. It was a very tough situation to be in. Let's fast forward. My first appointment where I just looked at the first ultrasound, it was in March or April. Things hadn't closed as much. People were limiting some movement. My husband and son came with me. Thankfully, they let my son go. He was able to be in there with me. After that visit, I went a couple more times. Four or five months into my pregnancy, 
I started to look for a midwife and I actually went back to the midwife who delivered my son 10 years before. She was still the loving and encouraging and motivating woman I remember, but sadly the staff that she had under her had changed and I did not feel comfortable being there. And there were a lot of young girls there who were very rude, wouldn't answer my questions. They wouldn't let me speak to the manager. And so I just decided not to go back there. I prayed so much after I left that uh, midwife and I was crying. I asked for exactly what I wanted. Thankfully, I found a midwife who was only 15 minutes away from my house. Throughout my pregnancy up until this point, because of the pandemic, I was pretty much alone at appointments. One of my prayers was for me to not be alone at my doctor's visits. When I made the appointment to go to this facility, I asked her, can my family come with me? And she said, sure. So that already made me feel at ease because this was going to be the first place where somebody was almost like with open arms, like sure your family can come. So when I met this midwife, she took me on a tour of the facility and I said, who can be in the delivery room with me? And she said, this is your, your delivery, whoever you want can be there. And I started crying and I told my husband, I was like, this is where I wanna deliver. The week of my delivery, I prayed. <laughs> Y'all, this might sound crazy, but because I wasn't able to experience like my water breaking on my own, the midwife broke it with my son. I actually prayed that I like felt all the little things that I didn't feel. I don't remember my mucus plug coming out. I prayed for that. <laughs> it's gross, right? I prayed that my, I felt my water break and I just prayed for, you know, a smooth delivery. I took some courses. Um, on certain breathing techniques and relaxation methods. I had my daughter on a Wednesday and that Sunday I lost my mucus plug and I was like what are you serious when I saw it I was very excited when I lost my mucus plug I talked to my daughter and I said honey I'm not ready for you to come yet please this is your first test of obedience and I'm talking to my stomach and I'm calling my baby her name and I said, I need you to wait until at least Tuesday. Like, I just wanna get through work on Tuesday. I feel like I'll be ready. And so please just wait until Tuesday. I went to work Monday on Tuesday. I'm feeling contractions. Of course, everyone's coming to my classroom asking me, you haven't had the baby yet, you're still here. And I was like, yes, y'all, I'm working until I go into labor. At that time, I had the long-term sub in my room. I was training her and I told her, I was like, hey, um, today you're go going to be on your own. I'll just monitor and observe. Okay, so I had, again, teachers coming in and out of the room, checking on me, seeing how I was doing. And I remember talking to some of them and they'd be like, are you having a contraction right now? And I'd be like, yep, but I'm good. Come on, just let's just keep talking. We have things to do. I would have my students and they'd be like, are you okay? Because I, was, I would just be talking or walking around and I'd just have to take a pause, just breathe but never like screaming or anything like that, just kind of just breathing through the contractions. And then I remember I went to the restroom and I couldn't walk back to my class at the time and I just was standing there on the wall and another teacher saw me and she was like, you have to leave. And I was like, no, I'm okay. She's like, no, I'm gonna go tell the assistant principal that you're leaving and um, I can take you home. And I was like, no, 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 I'm fine. I'll I'll get home. My husband and I and son, we went to the doctor's appointment and she told me I was two centimeters dilated. It was about 4.30. She said, just come back around 10.30. I was still just feeling like I was having Braxton Hicks contractions. Like they weren't too, too painful. They were bearable. I knew that after I had my daughter, I wouldn't be cleaning anything. And the thing that I have to have clean our restrooms like when my restroom is dirty i it just i don't want to go in there i have two and a half restrooms in my house so i started cleaning the bathrooms i started cleaning my son's restroom i cleaned the you know every, like the entire restroom swept mopped all of that stuff then i went to clean our half bathroom and while i was in there cleaning the toilet i just started to feel like i was peeing on myself and so i was like Oh my goodness, the water just kept falling and falling and falling. And I was like, oh my goodness, my water just broke. And I went through screaming through the house. I was so excited. I was like, oh my goodness. Like after I, 
I was like another prayer answered. Like I, my my water broke. I was just so excited, y'all. Y'all y'all probably think I'm crazy. But I had to change my clothes and everything because my water broke. I had to clean up the mess that I made. And I went ahead and cleaned my bath, my restroom. I felt dirty because I had went to work and cleaned bathrooms. And so I needed to take a shower. I took my shower. By this time, it's probably about 10, 15. And I know my midwife told me to come back at like 10, 30. I had braids at the time, but I remember the one thing my sister told me when I had my son 10 years ago was like, girl, how can you do hair? And your hair looks like it does when you're, when you're in labor. Because my head was, it did look a mess. I will sh share pictures with God. So my sister told me that my hair looked a hot mess and she was like, if you ever do this again, make sure you do your hair. So it's already like 1040. Had a long day at work. I have cleaned up. I'm in labor, but I was like, my hair needs to be cute. At my shower, I had these really pretty flowers that my sister got me and they were silk flowers. I put my hair in a bun and I made like a flower crown, put on some lip gloss and we left. I remember my midwife called me at like 10.45 or 10.50 and was like, are y'all here yet? And I said, no, we're on our way, we're about to go. And then my sister's texting me and she's like, girl, you better come on before your husband has to deliver the baby in the car. We get in the car. My husband's like playing Justin Timberlake from Trolls. I can't even remember the song, but I know that's the song. I'm like what in the world? I said, no, sir, I don't want this. I guess he was trying to put some up. I don't know. I didn't want no upbeat music. I was like, uh, uh you better put on some Kingdom Melodies. And so he turned on Kingdom Melodies and I just felt so calm. From that point on, I was just like in the most calm mood. And then even when I got to the birth center, I turned my phone on to Kingdom Melodies. And I just remember throughout the whole time that I was in labor, every time like I felt like I couldn't handle it, I was like, Jehovah, please help me. And I felt a calm. Like I felt like that really helped me. Like I prayed throughout my whole pregnancy and I continued to call on God's name throughout my entire labor and delivery. I got to the birth center at about 11 o'clock and I had my daughter at 1228. So I was only there for like an hour and a half. There were some intense moments, but never anything where I felt like I did not have self-control. And I just know that that was because my prayers were answered. I had my family around me, like my husband and my son were there, but then also my sister, my mom, and my nieces. Oh, all right, we're good. We are good. I like the big one. Yeah, yeah. Their presence like just made me know that I could do it. And like my son and my nieces were able to see their cousin born, just like they were able to see my son born 10 years before. I was smiling in labor. I was able to have a massage during the contractions. I went back and forth about sharing this part, but I'll go ahead and share that. A very scary moment for me was after delivery. My daughter wasn't crying and I noticed that the cord was wrapped around her body. It was wrapped around her neck twice and then her chest, like under her arm once. I was really, really afraid, but again, I prayed and thankfully the midwife was able to remove the cord from around her and she started to cry a little bit. I can just attribute all of my calm moments was all due to the answer of prayer. Being prepared, I would do exercises like kegels and just stretches and eat right. I was always moving, you know, being a teacher. Those are the things that helped me to be able to have two successful water births. I know everybody's situation will be different. And even though my two babies were not planned at all, my son helped me through a very, very difficult time in my life. And then my daughter helped me through a very difficult time in my life. And I just feel like my babies have helped me at times where I needed help. They are blessings. If you have any other questions or if you want to share your experiences with your births down below, motivate each other go ahead and do that and i'm just gonna keep on untwisting my hair thank y'all so much for watching and i hope help some of you out bye